Hi everyone. I want to help you with trinomial factoring. Factoring is, is such an important skill in mathematics, but it's not one that comes easily. It's not obvious to a lot of people. However, it's not even all that hard of a concept. It's, it's kind of like, honestly, it's kind of like learning, let's say, learning to drive a, a standard, okay? Uh, it takes a while, it takes a lot of practice, but once you get it, you get it. You just get comfortable with it, it becomes natural to you. Trinomial factoring is a lot like that, okay? Takes a little bit of getting used to. You gotta kinda get over that hump, and then once you're there, you're, you're good. Now, to start off with, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a couple of binomials, we're gonna multiply them together, because I'll show you here what we mean. This is what a, a trinomial would look like in factored form. This is the, our goal here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this, we're gonna expand this out, get an answer, and then I'm gonna show you how we get back to this, okay? So now, first of all, I'm gonna expand this out. And remember how that works here. We take both terms from this first binomial and they get distributed to both terms in this second bi binomial here. It's just a distribution. So 3x will get multiplied by 2x plus five. And then the negative two will also get multiplied by 2x plus five. 3x gets distributed to those terms and we get 6x squared plus 15x when I distribute the 3x to those two. Negative 2 then gets distributed to these two terms. We get negative 4x and then minus 10. Now, what causes the problems when we start factoring is that I now am going to put these two terms together. I'm going to combine them. So 6x squared well, positive 15 and negative 4 is going to get me 11x with a negative 10 at the back there. And at the fact that those two get combined together, that's what causes some of the difficulty here because it's kind of difficult to undo that, that little bit of addition there, the adding of the negatives there, okay? So now we're going to take a look at how to go backwards from here and take us right back to the beginning here. And there are several methods that can be used to do this. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to go backwards using a method that, that I'm going to call substitution because really what we're going to do is we're going to create a little expression that I'm going to substitute in and I'll, I'll do some factoring here uh, based on kind of an altered expression here. So now what we're going to do here, and it's quite clever actually, we're going to take this expression, we're going to change the way it looks, okay, uh, and actually I can't use the, the, the equal sign here because actually we're going to change this just slightly. I'm going to take and multiply this expression by the leading coefficient. So see the six there? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take now and I'm going to multiply this whole expression through by another six. Now it's important to remember that we did this, multiplied by six here. Now when I do that, that is going to create for me Okay, uh, that is going to create for me a 36x squared. Now, bear in mind here that that means it was a 6 times 6, x times x. So really what that is, is that's going to be 6x squared. Because when I multiply this by 6, the 6 is being squared, so is the x. So it's kind of like 6x squared. I'm going to multiply this by the 11. Now that would get me 66x. But I'm actually going to write this as 11 times... 6x, and that's because I can, I can change the order. 6 times 11 is the same as 11 times 6, and I'm good. Over at the end, though, I'm simply going to multiply that through and just get 60. There we go. So now, what I've got is I've got an expression that is actually a fair bit easier to factor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let, and I'm going to pick a variable, and I'm going to use u here. I'm going to let u be 6x. Now, I've got a reason for, for using the letter u. You'd see that later on um, in some uh, higher level math courses here. So this is not an, an uncommon uh, variable to use here. That's going to let this expression, we're going to create an expression that looks like this. u squared plus 11 times u minus 60. That's what this original expression is. This is, this one right here is a fair bit easier to factor than this original expression because there's no leading coefficient here now. So now I'm going to simply break this apart. Uh, to get a u squared, this would be u, this would be u. And now I'm looking for factors of negative 60 whose sum is 11. Okay, factors of negative 60 whose sum is 11. Now if you don't know what those are, 
Okay, if you don't know what the, the factors are, and by the way, that is, that is the difficult part here. One of the things you can do is you can go to your calculator. If you don't know what those factors are, go to y equals, press y equals right up top here. And I'm going to enter negative 60, whoops, sorry, negative 60, divided by, and I'll press this button right here, because that's my variable button. So it'll be negative 60 over x. And now I will press second graph to access the table of values. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here. The calculator has chosen all of these values and then divided it into 60 to get these values. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for a pair here that gets me negative 11 when you add those up. Now 4 and negative 15 is close. That gets me negative 11. But I actually want positive 11. So I'm thinking that that's got to be, yeah, there it is, 15 and negative 4. So when I come back here, this is, should be positive 15, negative 4. Now, I'm not done factoring, but I have, I've crossed kind of the, the big threshold here. Now I'm kind of on my way out of this problem. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to plug in the 6x in there, back in for you. So this becomes 6x plus 15, 6x minus 4. Now I'm still not quite done because now I've got some common factors to each of these terms here, but now this is kind of easy factoring here. For example, I can see that with, with uh, 6 and 15, there's going to be a common 3. That's going to leave me with 2x plus 5. And between 6 and the negative 4, there's going to be a common factor of 2. And when I pull that out, I'm going to get a 3x minus 2. Okay, so I've got this 3 that I pulled out. I've got this 2 that I pulled out. Because I can change order with multiplication, I'm going to swap these two and pull the two out. And then the 2 times 3 is 6. 2x plus 5, 3x minus 2. Okay, so I've got this thing factored, it's looking great, except I've got this multiple of 6 out front. Well, what do I do with that? That's when I remember, oh, wait a minute, right at the beginning here, to make this easier to factor, I multiplied by 6. Well, I changed this, the function here. So now, now we're going to take this right here, okay, and we're going to divide this by 6 to cancel those two 6s, because I don't need that 6 anymore. And so my final answer from here is going to be 2x plus 5 times 3x minus 2. And now if we compare that to our original expression, we have gone right back to where we started. Now, that was a little bit of a long process, this idea of substitution, right? Multiplying through by that leading coefficient, okay, kind of grouping those numbers together and then creating this letter U here. But the thing is, it's, they're easy steps all the way along here. Okay? Everything here is pretty straightforward. It, it's, this is taking the question that can be fairly difficult and reducing it to something that's actually pretty, each, each chunk here is, is bite-sized, it's manageable. It just is a little longer than, than your, the, a lot of the other processes we can do.